Hi, I'm Jonathan Hood, creator of Bleak of the Rechargeable Dog, and you are watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to cartoonist Rick Kirkman, co-creator with writer Jerry Scott of the syndicated daily comic strip Baby Blues. Stick around. Rick is up for the Rubin Award as Cartoonist of the Year. And if he wins, we all get to pour a bucket of desidin over his head. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview. The show is brought to you today by Amazon.com, the world's greatest store for everything from books and movies to computers, TVs, and even my favorite soft drink, Pepsi Wild Cherry. Thinking about buying something online from Amazon or just want to do a little window shopping? You can save yourself a lot of money and help support Mr. Media, that's me, by clicking on one of the Amazon ads at MrMedia.com and start your shopping with us. Get yourself the new iPad or Kindle Fire. Feeling a little racy today? Amazon's got what you need to feel exciting and new, as they used to sing on The Love Boat. Remember, start your next shopping trip from the comfort of your own home, car, hotel, or office with Amazon.com at MRmedia.com. That's right, MrMedia.com. And folks, thanks for your support. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of sleepless, brainless new parents who've given up their previous status as masters of the universe in exchange for being masters of the diaper genie in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Know what I miss most about being a new dad? Okay, okay, very little. But I do sort of miss those days when everything that happened in the newspaper comic strip Baby Blues was life as I knew it then. Sticky, steamy, stinky. And more than any other strip I've read in my lifetime, reading Baby Blues while you're a new parent always made it seem like cartoonist Rick Kirkman and writer Jerry Scott had a collection of video cameras wired throughout our home. The things that happened to Daryl and Wanda always happened to Mimi and me, too. Now that, of course, is the brilliance of any great literature, whether it's Dickens or Schultz, Eisner or Spielberg. If it's applicable to our own lives, we love and appreciate it all the more. Now, I recently had the thrill of reading BBXX, a.k.a. Baby Blues, Decades 1 and 2, a beautifully packaged collection of the best Baby Blues strips from the feature's first 20 years, chosen by the creators themselves. In addition, the individual comics are often liberally sprinkled with memories and anecdotes from Kirkman and Scott, explaining the inspiration behind some of their best gags. There are also character sketches from the prehistory of the strip and a collection of some of the best Sunday title panels you've probably never seen. Now, Rick Kirkman, that's him, in case you're watching us on TV. Yep, he's pointing, just in case you weren't sure. Rick Kirkman and Jerry Scott were on Mr. Media a couple years ago with Jim Borgman, who does uh, Zitz with Jerry. But I invited Rick back today to talk about the new collection and also to discuss his nomination this year by the National Cartoonist Society as Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year. And it is a very, very tough candidate class, too. With uh, Besides Rick, uh, Stefan Pastis, Pearls B Before Swine, and Brian Kirk, Brian Crane of Pickles. They're also nominated. Now, the Rubin Award a win winner will be announced on May 25, 2013 at the annual NCS Rubin Awards Dinner in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Rick Kirkman, welcome back to Mr. Media. Hi, Bob. Uh, thanks for having me on. Hey, congratulations on the award. I'm delighted, delighted uh, you know, you come down here with the little folks again and talk to us. <laughs> hey, well, thanks. I appreciate that. I uh, I don't know what I would do. I mean, uh, this year, you know, there have been years when I, I've seen the, the nominees for the uh, uh, Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year Award and thought, well, that was an easy pick. I know who I would pick. It's very clear mm -hmm. to me. 
And uh, even though you're you're sitting right in front of us right now, I have to be honest. This is a really tough year. I mean, uh, Pastis does a oh, great yeah. job. Uh, uh, Brian Crane, Pickles. It's, I mean, there's three fantastic strips. If there was ever to be a three-way tie, this would be a very easy <laughs> year to justify. Well, for the sake of the NCS, I hope it's not a tie, so they don't have to buy three three statues. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is tough. Uh, you know, they're every you know, Stefan and, and Brian are both great. Um, so I have no idea what my chances are. So. Uh, who knows? Now, you know, have you have you cast your vote? Uh, yes, yes. Can you tell us who you voted for? No. Okay. Sec- <laughs> secret ballot. Okay. All right. But uh, now, Pastis has been on this show, and he also, when I had uh, Mark Tatuli, who does Leo on, he called into that show. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not expecting to hear from him today, but I- I'm sure – past this being past this he's out there playing dirty so i want to give you this opportunity is there anything you'd like to reveal about past this right now to people who may not have cast their their ballot yet uh you know because you, you know like because i actually heard him say i read this online he, he was quoted as saying you know kirkman's never actually changed the diaper in his life <laughs> uh you know i i'm i'm not going to talk trash uh <laughs> I, I'm going to rise above that level. Um, I know that's you know not the way Stefan rolls. But, you know. <laughs> okay, then you probably don't want to read this other quote I got from him. <laughs> uh, should I go ahead, or do you, would you rather not hear this? Oh, oh, go right ahead. Okay, he said, Kirkman couldn't tell the difference between a tube of Desidin and a can of WD-40. <laughs> All right, Stefan, rub your off. Oh, I'm just trying to produce, <laughs> provoke something that's just not there, aren't I? No, no. no. Uh, all right. But well, so so tell me this. And, and Brian's such a nice guy. That, you know, I would never say anything bad about Brian. Um, and and really, honestly, I should say something bad about Stefan since I have the opportunity. But <laughs> I'm... should I, is this the point where I'm supposed to admit that I made those things up? <laughs> uh, oh, I kind of figured. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I kind of figured you did because. Uh, now, Stephens would have been way better. Well, it's oh, great. Oh, great. All right, interview's over. Kill the set. Jeez. Uh, well, then I don't know if I want to ask you this question. Uh, but what, I mean, what is the value to a cartoonist of winning uh, the Rubin? I mean, it, it, I know it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very big award. Is it, is it more of a, um, uh, an acknowledgement of that you've reached a certain level in your uh, in your career? Is it, is, is there a monetary, I mean, I, I know you don't get like a cash award from it, but does it pay off? Have you found that it pays off, uh, in terms of, you know, more newspapers will buy a strip that, you know, by a cartoonist that wins the award? I, I doubt it. Uh, I've never heard of a, a Reuben bump, uh, That's... at all from this, but, um, uh, I, I don't know. Mostly I think it's, um, it's probably just, you know, something that gives you some uh, job satisfaction, you know, that you're part of whatever, you know, uh, this group is that's considered, um, you know, pretty good cartoonists. So, um, I mean, I, it really is an honor to be nominated. So whether I win or not, I you know, um, at least it's, uh, you know, the nomination is something in itself. So... Well, and I, I want to, and, and the only, I mean, the, the big thing about the Ruben is, uh, as far as I know, uh, there aren't any, you know, rewards that come with it. You know, we don't have groupies or anything like that. And it, mostly it means that somebody's going to have to clear off some crap off of their shelf and, <laughs> and find a place for it. Well, and I, I want to be, I want to be absolutely fair uh, to Rick. Uh, so people know he actually, when I first suggested that he come back on the show and, and do this, uh, to talk about the nomination, he wasn't really sure he wanted to do it. He didn't want to be seen as uh, campaigning for it. And he was very modest about it. And uh, I'm, I, 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 you know, I just want you to know, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, oh, sure. Because I, I know you were kind of hesitant to, you know, to do that now, but uh, you know, 
what better time is there, really, frankly? So, uh, so, so we can stop talking about it now. Yes, we can, uh, <laughs> except for one more question about it. Um, actually, well, actually, there's two questions. One is, do you, do you worry at all um, in being nominated? And, and if, if, uh, if you're fortunate enough to win the award, uh, it, it, do you ever worry? Do you worry that it's a sign that maybe you've peaked and that you, you know you won't be recognized for for the work again? Because well, he's got his Reuben. What else do we need to say about him? Well, I hope not. Um, you know, I, I frankly the just the nomination has made me feel like uh, you know I have to kind of step up my game a little bit. Mm. So. Uh, I don't know. I can't imagine what it'll feel like if if I happen to win. Uh, I would think that would probably put a lot of pressure on, uh, rather than, you know, coasting. Mm. Now there's a there's a, a photo and a story in the in the new book, uh, BBXX, the uh, first uh, two decades of uh, Baby Blues, uh, about how uh, you won uh, an earlier award. And uh, uh, your partner, your writing partner, uh, Jerry Scott, came running up with a label and put it over it. Oh, yeah. He had one of those big label makers in his, in his tux yeah. j- uh, jacket. And he came running up with the label maker and quickly, you know, <laughs> spelled out his name on it and printed out a label. And we stuck it on the, uh, <laughs> the award. And how does Jerry feel about this nomination? I can show that to you if you want. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Hold on a second. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> This is why I love the video, folks. We get to see things we did not expect to see. There it is. Oh, look at that. uh, You can see the label (laughs) still on it. (laughs) That is great. Oh, my God. I actually actually told him once that um, I would try to have it split in half so that he could have half of it. Because back back then, um, only one person and it was the person who actually does the drawing Mm -hmm. was awarded uh uh an award for you know best comic strip or you know panel or whatever um but that's since changed because of uh you know true collaborations and um and and it changed after uh a similar thing happened with uh zitz but uh, but anyway, I told him. I said, "Well, I'll 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 just have this cut in half, and then you can have half of it, and I'll have half of it." And I tried, I think, for about two years, calling all sorts of places, trying to find out if they could actually cut this thing in half and guarantee that they wouldn't just destroy it. Uh. And nobody would guarantee they couldn't just des- destroy it. So uh, if Jerry wants to see it. He's got to come out to Arizona. <laughs> you know, I saw a uh, there's a laser in one of the James Bond movies that could saw a man in half. I would think that they that wherever they got that, they could you know take care of that for you. Well, you would think so, but uh, you know, there's there's always the possibility because of what these things are made of that they'll just burst into flames or uh, melt. So, <laughs> or you'll find out that they're hollow or something. Um, so how does how does Jerry feel about this? Because this is, I mean, it, this is just you that's that's nominated for this. Uh, is, are we going to see another label uh, from from Jerry? No, no, no. Jerry's got his own. So Jerry, suck it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so you, <laughs> speaking of Jerry, so you guys have been uh, producing Baby Blues now since 1990. Uh, one of the things that you talk about uh, in the book, in some of the the uh, the marginal notes and the introductions to various sections is how uh, when it started you, I, correct me if I'm wrong but when it started only you had children Jerry did not yet have children right right and oh, then can you hold on a second yep <coughs> maybe you can cut that out yeah <coughs> maybe I can <laughs> um, <coughs> so so when when yes uh, I had I had kids at the time or my wife and I did. Hmm. Um, I don't want to leave her out. Um, yeah, we had kids at the time. Uh, we had two daughters, and uh, Jerry didn't have any kids. So uh, uh, pretty much, you know, the way the strip started was uh, we had had our second daughter who was, you know, uh, not sleeping, not eating, you know, basically just making everybody around her miserable. And um, so when I went into work, uh, you know, I was kind of a mess, a lot of sleep deprivation, and uh, 
And we were trying to come up with a comic strip, so Jerry and I would meet at my office and various places. And usually what would happen is our conversations about what we wanted to develop for a comic strip degenerated into me just, you know, babbling about uh, what was going on at home and, you know, turned into a kind of a therapy session. You had kids. Jerry did not. When Jerry did, in a couple of years, have his first kid, or his, uh, it added that you guys decided to add another child uh, to Daryl and Wanda's family, and they're right. creating all kinds of new opportunities because now there's a there's a there's a br little brother, and the older girl is is maturing, and you get to see different things that way. How do you right. sustain something like this? And this is this book is 20 years of strips. This is you're in your 23rd year, depending on how you count. 24th year, I don't right, know. right. I never know how people do that. Um, how do you keep coming back? You know, other than putting video cameras in my house and seeing what's going on here. Um, I'm assuming you guys are not having kids still every four or five years. No, no. Uh, you know, both of my kids are grown now. Uh, one of Jerry's kids is in college. So, yeah, it's uh, – uh, there comes a time when uh, you just have to rely on uh, memory. Uh, you steal from your friends, your neighbors, um, fans, whoever, you know, you can. Um, I do a lot of things like – um, observe things, you know, like at the mall, uh, at the airport, uh, um, you know, going out to dinner, wherever, you know, and, um, and we see things and, you know, the ideas come from that. You just, uh, just have to keep your eyes open for them. Um, and then, you know, it's amazing how many things I still think about, um, you know, that'll pop into my head and I'll call Jerry and I said, oh, okay, here's something that uh, we've never done. And I forgot about it from, you know, years ago. And this would make a great series or whatever. And, uh, and he, he does the same thing, you know, we'll get into conversation and he'll, he'll be thinking about something that, uh, uh, came up with his kids. Um, so, uh, the, the ideas come from everywhere. Do you think you'll ever reach a point where, um, You'll do what uh, Lynn Johnson did with uh, For Better or Worse, where the kids will, you know, every, all the kids will grow up and they will eventually, you know, have their own families and then baby blues become basically, you know, grandchildren in the strip. No, I, I don't think we'll do that. Um, I mean, we've already slowed down the, um, the growth rate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did have them, we did have them growing for a long time at about a quarter to a third of uh, what real time was. And uh, at some point we, we slowed it down and then stopped. Um, so right now we're kind of in a holding pattern just because um, the way the family dynamics are, uh, it gives us uh, a lot of opportunities for gags, you know, because we've, we've still got a baby. Uh, we've got uh, a kid in first grade and then an older sibling. Uh, a couple of years older, so um, so that's a that gives a pretty good variety of um, of, of, of gag situations. So my contraption is I'm taking a bulldog clip and clipping my iPad to my lamp, desk lamp. Okay. So I'm hoping this uh, it worked last night. So we'll see if it still works. All right. Okay. So here's my uh, whoops. Here's my piece of paper. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I can draw here. Yeah, that's, that? yeah, we can see that. That's great. So, so uh, folks, uh, if you're if you're wondering what's going on here, uh, Rick has uh, moved to his drawing table, and he's going to give us a little demonstration of uh, how he draws uh, baby blues. Yeah, I um, I actually draw with a pencil. Hmm. Uh, on the dailies, I use this uh, graphite pencil. It's a real thick three millimeter pencil for all you uh, art supply geeks out there. 
and um, and on the Sundays I use colored pencil. Um, so I'll just draw a little picture of Hammy here. All right. One of the uh, one of the interesting things in the uh, the BBXX book is the uh, character sketches from uh, early on, where you show uh, the characters uh, like Wanda, for example, developing, uh, and you know, and uh, uh, some of the other characters. There's there's little sketches to show how how they've kind of developed. So this is a this is an added bonus for us here. How hard was it to uh, to narrow down and for you and Jerry to pick out, you know, kind of your favorite uh, representative uh, strips over the years? There's so many to pick from. Well, that was really tough. Uh, I went out to uh, Jerry's place in California, and uh, the nice thing about it was that we have a lot of books that have been published. So we basically used the books as um, as our way to choose. Um, so what we did was um, we had a really large pile of post-it notes hmm. and uh, uh, went through and each of us had selected uh, our favorite strips out of all the books. And then we got together and one by one decided uh, which ones, you know, we wanted to keep. So the plan essentially was, okay, uh, if I picked it and he picked it, then it was in. If one of us picked it, then we either just decided not to put it in uh, or we negotiated or something. Mm. In the end, we end, we still ended up with too many and had to go through and, uh, and, and cut them back. But altogether, I think there are around 800 strips in the book mm. and it, it's, out of uh, over, over 7,000 strips. Wow. Uh, to pick from and it's it's interesting to read in the uh, margin notes for a lot of the strips uh, either how many times something came right out of uh, real life and uh, one of you had to pay the price for that or <laughs> 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 or uh, in your in your head it happened this way <laughs> yeah that's that's true now it's interesting looking looking at hammy even upside down we can see I mean, it's very, it's a very three-dimensional style. I mean, his mouth, for example, it, it looks like you could just reach in there and grab his tonsils. <laughs> Not that anyone <laughs> would do that, of course. Oh, thanks. But it has, it has depth. I mean, it's interesting. Even, even the way we're seeing it uh, develop, it, you can see depth uh, in the sketch. Well, I, I you know, I, I try to, uh, to make them seem real even though they're uh, they're not realistic depictions of people uh, because nobody really has ears that big or cheeks that big or eyes that big or whatever um, so like so there's the oh that's great that's great thank you <laughs> Are you saying that no one has noses as big as your uh, your the adults in your strip? Uh, I would hope not. <laughs>
so sometimes we'll end up with a situation. Here, there's there's Daryl. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> Needing a shave. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there there are sometimes when when you have trouble with that, like uh, if they're if they're face to face. Um, you know, this this is Wanda's nose, mm -hmm. and you can see Daryl's nose. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of space in there. So what what we'll sometimes end up having to do is is kind of um, poke their noses into each other's. <laughs> What did you observe about your own work going back and, and you know, preparing for a 20-year retrospective like this? Did you, you know, didn't, can you see the differences? I'm sure you can over 20 years. And Oh, sure. Uh, you know, the uh, in the old days, here's an example of how, you know, sometimes you have to just kind of... Uh, That's great. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, in, in, the, uh, in the old days when the strip first started, you can see that there's, um, I don't know if it's, um, uh, there's an edginess to the drawings um, that I think is born out of uh, the sleep deprivation, <laughs> um, you know, the, the frayed nerves. Um, and, and as they've got, as, as they've, uh, progressed over the years as they've become more mellow as parents and more a bit more competent and everything their their features have also uh, uh, softened mm. softened and, and ref been refined somewhat I would I would add yeah yeah uh, the shapes have uh, uh, changed a little bit uh, and and part of that is just uh, I think repetition of uh, drawing the characters over and over. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I try as much as possible to, to be, um, uh, spontaneous with the drawing. So I, I do very little, uh, penciling. I, uh, I will sometimes pencil with a, a blue pencil and just put in, you know, um, a shape basically and just kind of, you know, something like that. And then when I do it, that's when the real drawing comes in. Hmm. Um, because it, I just like the being able to use, and especially with the pencil, being able to be more spontaneous with the drawing. Hmm. <laughs> I think we're completing the family. Well, almost. So. Yeah. So, so I try to do as little, uh, you know, sketching as possible. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take you to actually do a single strip, like a, a daily? Uh, boy, that varies a lot, um, depending on the strip. Um, sometimes they can be, you know, take quite a long time. Uh, I'd say a short one probably takes about a uh, half hour or so to do, uh, just the basic drawing. Um, but then you add on, you know, scanning, touching up, putting screens on, you know, all of that sort of thing. So it, it, and, it adds up. Yeah, yeah. And what about a Sunday with color and... Uh, well, hold on just a second. Let me, um, let me move back uh, right. over to, to the other location and I'll, I'll show you something with a Sunday. Great. All right, so we're we're back at. Uh, oops. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's been that kind of day, right? <laughs> my uh, my my setup here. Uh, there we go. Sorry, my, I'm at a chair with a music stand, so <laughs> so I bumped it with a chair and it fell over. Uh, so. Okay, so uh, now I'm back in position. Um, okay, so what were you going to say? I have no idea. Um, so Rick, we're we're back at your desk. <laughs> now let me start over. So, so Rick, we're back at your desk, and you were going to show us something about a Sunday strip. Mm -hmm. Now, the Sunday strip is the only one that I really do um, uh, sort of tight sketches uh, for, and that's because I still draw those with um, colored pencil, which means that I can't erase any um, uh, any lines mm. and. Uh, and using the blue pencil kind of makes the, the uh, uh, colored pencil not stick as well. So what I end up doing is I make a, a tight sketch on tracing paper. And I don't know if you can... Yeah, yeah, we can see that. See this? Yep. Yeah, that is a tight sketch. And then I put it on a light box. Or I make a photocopy and then put that on a light box and trace it on uh, bristle board. Oh, so cool. Meet me. Oh, wow, you got everybody in this one. <laughs> Yosemite yeah, Sam. This, this, is a, this is a pretty funny one. Uh, or fun. It was fun to draw because I had to research you know, how to turn uh, Daryl into these uh, <laughs> Warner, Warner Brothers characters. So. I love that. But anyway, those are done. Uh, um, those are the only ones that I do really tight sketches for anymore. Mm. Um, but uh, the the dailies, I I do a little bit of uh, uh, blocking in with the blue pencil, mm -hmm. and then do the drawing pretty pretty much direct. Um, you know, without without a lot of uh, detail in the sketch. Um, and then when Jerry sees it, I I send him. Uh, photocopies of what I've done and when he sees it it's pretty much the final drawing uh, on the dailies hmm. um, and a nice thing about working in graphite too is uh, it's easy to make changes because you can uh, erase really well um, and so if I have to you know fix something or change a line of dialogue or whatever usually that's not a big deal because I can I can erase the graphite I have an electric eraser that I use too and um, that pretty much gets rid of uh, whatever I need to get rid of, and then I just pencil over it again. Hmm. Well, uh, let's let, let me ask you one more question, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Uh, sure. We've been we've been testing the gods of Wi-Fi all afternoon. Uh, <laughs> if if you had one, based on years of experience now and all the things you've learned along the way and people that you've met, if you had one piece of advice for someone who dared to think about becoming a cartoonist at this point. Uh, what would it be? What would you What would you want to tell them besides run? Uh, yeah, I was going to say think twice about it uh, <laughs> or three times. Uh, no, I. As far as a piece of advice, I would say stay true to uh, what it is that means something to you, um, rather than chasing, you know. Um, Sometimes people chase the dream of wanting to be syndicated or whatever it is that they want out of, you know, cartooning. Um, and when they chase this dream of wanting to be syndicated, um, it leads you to do things like uh, try and come up with ideas. Oh, this has never been done before. You know, uh, a rabbit and a walrus who are, you know, best friends, you know, well, well nobody's done it because probably nobody cares, <laughs> you know, uh, so, so the, and I, I have to admit that was actually one of our ideas. So, <laughs> so you know that nobody cares. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so the thing is, uh, it didn't really happen for us until we found something that we actually cared about. Mm. Uh, so, and it, and it came from, you know, my life, Jerry's life, um, 
And when it comes from a, a place where you're caring about something you care about, um, I think you've got a much better shot at, uh, you know, arriving at your dream. But to chase the dream and just try to find out, oh, you know, uh, what does an editor like? What, did, you know, what are they, you know, what hasn't been done before? I think just kind of uh, sets you up for failure. Well, uh, good advice. Appreciate that. I'm glad that was a good good place to to, to wind that down. I think. And folks, listen. Uh, you can find Rick Kirkman and Jerry Scott's daily comic strip, Baby Blues, in more than a thousand great daily newspapers, pretty much around the world at this point. And if you love the strip as much as I do, you will definitely want to order a copy of the 20-year retrospective, BBXX, Baby Blues, Decades One and Two. Um, you can find it in great bookstores everywhere, or even better, because I know you want it right now. I mean, right now. Right below, if you're watching the video, right below the video, there's a picture of the book. You can click on it right now. It'll take you to Amazon.com. You can buy it right this minute, and you'll be helping out Mr. Media a little bit. You help yourself out, and you know Amazon. You're going to get it really fast. And probably this, this thing is probably going to qualify for free shipping under most circumstances, so you really want to do it this way. Um, Rick, uh, the website for uh, Baby Blues is babyblues.com? Babyblues.com. And you guys have a and blog, we have too? A, we now have a blog, uh, so that's babyblues.com slash blog, uh, or you can just click on the link right. on the home page. And I know you are on Facebook. Uh, is your partner on Facebook? Well, I, I am, but we also have a Baby Blues Facebook page. So uh, uh, you can come uh, like, like the Baby Blues page, and uh, you know we post things on there having to do with the blog and answer questions about the strip sometimes and things like that. So. Rick, no matter what Pasta says... And no matter what Pastas does, I really, I just want to really wish you luck. I, you've been a very good friend of the show. I've enjoyed having you today and in the past, and uh, gr much good luck in uh, in your pursuit of the award. And I, oh, well, I hope you get well, it. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. My pleasure. It's been great. Thanks for being here, thanks. and uh, we'll look forward to having you back again. Okay, terrific. Thanks. Bye. You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love for Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin. Here's The Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, The TechCrunch Headlines, and The Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, Blackberry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. That's stitcher.com slash MR Media. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party... Please consider calling 1 800 DIAL DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. 
you can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening. Today's episode of Mr. Media Interviews is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. You know GoDaddy.com from their wild and sexy commercials, but isn't it time you actually test drove their web hosting and domain registration services yourself? For a limited time, Mr. Media listeners can save 10% on the already low price of web hosting services at GoDaddy.com by entering the promo code POD4 at checkout. Again, that's 10% off web hosting when you go to GoDaddy.com and enter the promo code POD4, that's P-O-D, the number 4, at checkout.